Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we discuss stable sorting algorithms. In particular, we study three things. One, when do we call a sorting algorithm as stable? Two, why is stability a useful property of sorting algorithms? And three, what makes a sorting algorithm stable? About this third point, I think I have some original insights about what exactly leads to a sorting algorithm being stable or unstable. So stay tuned. Let's get down to the first question. What is meant by the stability of a sorting algorithm? Let's say you have a list of numbers. There are plenty of sorting algorithms, selection sort, quick sort, insertion sort, bubble sort, etc., which can sort the given list. These algorithms make different choices about how to interchange the numbers in the list to arrive at the sorted list of numbers. You can see the animation of a few algorithms here. They have different time and space complexities, but they all get the job done. Now consider what happens when some of the input numbers are equal. Let's change our original array a bit. Let's change 23 to 18 so that we have two 18s and change 28 to 14 so that we have two 14s. To distinguish between the two 18s, let's call them 18 1 and 18 2 and to distinguish between two 14s, let's call them 14 1 and 14 2. Once again, let's run selection sort, quick sort, insertion sort and bubble sort on this array. As you can see, Selection sort has swapped the order of the two 18s, so it is not a stable sorting algorithm. Quick sort has done the same, so it is also not a stable sorting algorithm. Insertion sort has kept the order of the two 18s and the two 14s intact. In fact, it does so that is retains the orders of the elements of the equal elements for any given input. So it is a stable sorting algorithm. Same holds true for the bubble sort as well. You may think, well, what's the big deal? An 18 is an 18 and a 14 is a 14. Why is preserving the order even important? The reason is that we might not be sorting the list in isolation. These numbers which we are sorting may just be a property of some larger entity. Let's take an example. Suppose that these numbers are the marks obtained by some students in some online competition and the array indices denote the order in which the students made the submission. So Mahesh was the first to submit the assignment and he got 24 marks. Next was Suresh who got 15 marks and so on. We need to sort this array in descending order of the marks to determine the leaderboard. Here is the leaderboard for the given example. Now it is reasonable to make a rule that if two students got the same number of marks, then the student who made the submission earlier should be ranked higher than the one who made the submission later. So while Tanmay and Rahul both got 27 marks, Tanmay is ranked higher than Rahul because he made the submission first. This can be achieved if we use a stable sorting algorithm. Or let's consider another example. Say there is an Excel sheet containing names and countries of the students. The first column contains the names of the students and the second column contains their countries. As you can see, there are, there are a bunch of Indians, a bunch of Chinese, a bunch of Americans and some Australians in this list. Let's say a user first decides to sort the list in the order of the names. Next, for some reason, he decides to order the list in the order of the countries. Indeed, now we have the list sorted as per the country names. But notice an interesting thing. Since the list was already sorted by the names first and Excel uses a stable sorting algorithm, all the Australians are now sorted in alphabetical orders. So are all the Chinese and all the Indians. This is much neater for the end user than if the Excel were to use some unstable sorting algorithm and jumble up the names uh, of uh, people uh, with a given country. All right, so this was one strong reason to use stable sorting algorithms. Here is one more. Some sorting algorithms, specifically the radix sort, use a stable sorting algorithm 
as a subroutine within themselves. Let's have a quick look at the radix sort. Say we have these six numbers to sort. We first sort these numbers by the last digit. To do this sort, we use some other sorting algorithm suited for such a task like perhaps counting sort. We then sort the resulting list by the second last digit, by the third last digit, by the second digit, and finally the first digit. When you have sorted the numbers by all the digits in this way, the original list is sorted as you can see. The important point is that the sorting algorithm that we have to use to sort the numbers by specific digits needs to be stable. To have an idea why, see that in the list before the last sort, when the numbers were sorted by the last four digits, 40404 was before 45635. This is because 0404 is less than 5635. Now when sorting by the first digit, it is important that 40404 remains before 45635 and this can be ensured only by stable sorting algorithms. Alright, now that we have hopefully convinced that stable sorting algorithms are a good idea, let's see which of the popular sorting algos are stable and which are not. In fact, any sorting algorithm can have a stable version, perhaps at additional space or time complexity. However, some algos are naturally stable, that is they don't need any special provision for them to be made stable. If you closely observe the difference between various algorithms, you will find that the key characteristic of unstable algorithm is that they swap non-adjacent elements of the array. Let's see how the swaps of non-adjacent elements destroy the stability of an algorithm. In this array, there are two 18s and a 14. Never mind what are the other elements. Now suppose that the algorithm dictates to you to swap the first 18 with the 14. Now this swap is going to put 18.1 later than 18.2 which will make the algorithm unstable. If you could quickly identify that there is another 18 in the array 18.2 then you could have swapped that 18 with 14 and preserve the stability. But to find another 18 will take order and time and that would destroy the stability of the algorithm. If your algorithm however restricts itself to swapping adjacent elements only, then you can always avoid swapping 18.1 and 18.2 and never land in this problem. Time for a reality check. Merge sort, insertion sort and counting sort have no swaps so they are stable. Bubble sort swaps only adjacent elements, so that is stable too. Quick sort, heap sort and selection sort swap non-adjacent elements, so they are unstable. I have put a link to the code of all these algos in the description where you can check for the existence of swaps in various algos. There is another way in which you can look at sorting algorithms. You know, in life, there is no free lunch. If you are good at one thing, you will miss out on another. That idea leads us to the impossible trinity for comparison based sorts. There are three desirable properties that we want from a comparison based sort. We want it to run in order and log in time because that's the best a comparison based sort can do. We want it to consume only order one extra space and we want it to be stable. The impossible trinity states that a given algorithm can get at max two of these properties. If like quick sort or heap sort, the algorithm is order n log n with order one extra space, then it is so much focus on time and space complexities that it needs to swap non-adjacent elements and so it is not a stable sort. Merge sort is also order n log n, but it uses order n extra space, so it has enough slack to be stable too. Finally, insertion sort and bubble sort are order n square algorithms. Since they compromise on speed, they can get the work done in order one extra space at this end at the same time, they are the stable algorithms as well. Selection sort, however, is an anomaly. It is an order n square algo and so since it is not time optimal, it should be able to achieve both order one space complexity and stability. It does achieve order one space complexity, but it is not stable. The reason is that the standard selection sort employs a shortcut where it replaces n shifts by one swap of the non-adjacent elements. If we switch it to n shifts, 
then it will be a stable algorithm while still retaining order one square complexity and order one space. Have a look at the more material in the description of this video. All right, so that was all about stable sorting algorithms. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you later. Bye.